coming up on Fresh View with Pastor Inkechi Ene. No, no, no. You don't need to invite the power of the Lord. If Jesus was present, the power of the Lord was already present to heal glory be to God. So you don't keep the service for this moment where you now announce that, yes, now everybody begin to plead for the power of God. Let the power of God fall. Let the power of God come down upon us. No, if Jesus is in the house, the power of the Lord is present to heal. for you the heavens are open all possibilities are now you are only commanded to prosper your course is enlarged in the name of Jesus where you have hurt and bowed in shame it's time to look up and be strong now because a new day breaks upon you. This February, we invite you to Discovering Treasures, the annual World Conference of the Carpenters Ministry. Dates, Friday the 4th, Saturday 5th, and Sunday the 6th of February, 2022. Welcome to 2022, your year of God's generosity. Theme, God's Generosity. Ministering, Dr. F.A. Obuke, guest speaker. Pastor Nkechi Enemises, host. Ministering in music, Stranger, Folabi Noel, and the New Wine Choir. Venue is the Carpenters Church, the Carpenters Drive, off Ajip or Iwafe Road, Mile 4, Rumeme, Port Harcourt. I've put you in a new environment, the environment of victory. So walk in laughter, walk in joy, lift up your head, shout my praise. Discovering Treasures will be streamed to you anywhere in the world on our video and audio platforms. Simply connect to tcchurch.online, Facebook, YouTube, and on Mixler. Childcare and transportation will also be available. Visit www.discoveringtreasures.org for more details. DT 2022, the reign of the pure word is here. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh To You, we continue a series we began a while ago titled The Healing Miracles of Jesus. And in portions, we're going to go through every single miracle recorded in the scriptures that Jesus um, carried out, every single healing miracle, the healing miracles of Jesus. We've done three healing miracles. We looked at miracle number one, which was the healing of the leper. Miracle number two was the healing of the centurion's servant. And miracle number three was the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. Well, today we begin miracle number four. And can you guess what miracle number four is? Miracle number four is the healing of the paralytic. The healing of the paralytic. And this is a very powerful story. And we're going to learn many truths from this story of the healing of the paralytic. Our texts are from Matthew 9, 2 to 7, Mark 2, 3 to 12, and Luke 5, 18 to 26. So I'll start reading Matthew 9, 2 to 7. So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at, some, and at once... Some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, 
Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Mark 2, 3 to 12. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately they gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic, who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed, and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. We also see the same story in Luke 5, 18 to 26. So just take that down, but I won't read it. I'll just mention a few things later from Luke's version. So we've seen three portions of scripture, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, telling us a story about the healing of the paralytic. We're going to now begin to look at some lessons that will really show us how we can reach out and receive the healing that is already ours in our redemption package. If you're a believer, if you're born again, in your redemption package is healing already. Now, how, what do you need to do to reach out and receive that healing that is already yours? Glory be to God. So let's look at Matthew chapter 9 and verse 1. It says, so he got into the boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Mark 2, verse 1. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. It was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the word to them right there in the house. So the first thing you must do, you must realize that Jesus is always in the house to heal. Glory be to God. That's the first thing. Realize that Jesus is always in the house to heal. Now, what house is this? Well, for us as believers, I'm referring to places where the name of the Lord Jesus is named and where Jesus is Lord in such places. Not necessarily everywhere, you know, that is called a church is actually part of the body of Christ. So you must know when you are in a place where the name of Jesus is lifted high, where Jesus is Lord, that when he is there, he's right there, present in the house. And the reason he's present in the house is to heal. I can also say this right here on Fresh Dew. This is a house. In the house of Fresh Dew, Jesus is always present. So even now as you watch these episodes, even now as you listen to these teachings on healing, realize that Jesus is present and is present in this house called Fresh Dew to heal you. So when you watch, expect and have the realization that Jesus is present in the house. It's interesting that, let me say this as an aside, that it says here that it was heard that he was in the house and immediately many gathered together. Do you see what actually brings the crowds is Jesus? This is an aside for pastors who are watching. What actually brings the crowds is Jesus. When Jesus, when it is heard that Jesus is in the house, 
Not necessarily that this big man of God or this little man of God, whichever way we like to classify people, what is really important, it was heard that Jesus is in the house and immediately many began to gather. Glory be to God. So the people will gather when Jesus is in the house. The people will gather when your advertisements, when your proclamations are about Jesus being in the house. Glory be to God. Jesus should be the focus of every ministry. Jesus should be the focus of our advertisements. Jesus should be the focus of our message because when he is in the house and it is heard that he's in the house, then people gather into the house. Glory be to God. Look at Luke 5, 17. It says, now it happened on a certain day that he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town in Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So Jesus being in the house, the implication of his being in the house was that he was in the house to heal. It says he came there and he was teaching, first of all, and the power of the Lord was present to heal. There's so much to take from this. First of all, he was teaching. Somebody says, why are you talking about the healing miracles of Jesus and you are teaching the word? Get straight into praying for people. Begin, no, 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 my friends, no. Jesus was teaching. When you find Jesus ministering many times to the letter, you will find him teaching and then preaching and then healing. He was teaching. But as he was teaching, the power of the Lord was present to heal. That tells me that when Jesus is present, there is a double force that works. The double force of the word and the double force of the word and the spirit. The double force, the combined force of the word and the spirit are present when Jesus is in the house. So even now, right here on Fresh G, Jesus is in the house and the word is present and the power of the Lord is present to heal you. Even as you listen to the teaching, the power of the Lord was already present to heal. Glory be to God. And that's the double force. That's the double guarantee we have when Jesus is lifted high and when Jesus is present in the house, glory be to God. When you lift Jesus high and make him the focus, then the double force of the word, the teaching of the word and the power of the Lord is always present to heal you. Note that it says the power of the Lord was already present to heal. So we're not talking about a meeting where somebody comes in and says, now it's time to invite the power of God. No, no, no. You don't need to invite the power of the Lord. If Jesus was present, the power of the Lord was already present to heal. Glory be to God. So you don't keep the service for this moment where you now announce that, yes, now everybody begin to plead for the power of God. Let the power of God fall. Let the power of God come down upon us. No, if Jesus is in the house, the power of the Lord is present to heal. If you will receive your healing that is already in your redemption package, friends, you must realize that Jesus is present and the reason he's present is to heal. And he heals with the double force of the word, the teaching of the word. That's what opens your eyes to see what is already yours and the power of the Lord that is always present to heal when Jesus is in the house. Glory be to God. So it's the same today as it was then, because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The double force of the word, and the double force of the word, rather, and the power of the Spirit of God will always work hand in hand. I declare that even now as you're watching, that double force is present. For where the word is, God is always present to confirm his word with signs and wonders following. So let your expectations be high and be ready to receive even now as you're listening because Jesus is in the house. I proclaim it and it is heard that the Lord Jesus himself is right here in the house. He's right here. And as you're watching on television, you're watching on your telephone, on your phone rather, you're watching on your, on your iPad, whichever way you're watching, Jesus is right there present. And the reason he's present, child of God, is to heal you. Is to take away that lump from that breast. He's right there present to heal. A combined force of the word. The word that shows you that Jesus, once it is heard that he's in the house, he is present 
to heal. Look at what Luke says. And I love many times reading about the healing miracles from Luke because Luke was a doctor. And if you look very closely into Luke's renditions, you'll always see something that he saw or explained or, you know, you know, really explained in a special way because he was a doctor and he could think as a doctor and he could see a miracle and find a way of explaining it in his own words that would make it even clearer to us. So let's look at Luke. Let's look at Luke 26, 526 rather. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear saying, we have seen strange things today. You know, if you just look at it that like that, like I think the Mark version said, we never saw anything like this. It doesn't really tell you exactly what happened. But when you look at Luke's version, it says, we have seen strange things today. That was the word Luke used to explain what the people said. It says the people were amazed and they, were, they glorified God and were filled with fear saying, we have seen strange things today. Why am I emphasizing that word strange things? Well, let's look at the word strange. It's a Greek word, paradoxos. I love that word. I love that word. Listen to that word and listen to the meaning of that word. Paradoxos, and you can begin to guess, in the sense of seeming contrary to expectation. That is extraordinary paradox. If Luke was a doctor, what expectation do you really think they're talking about? Contrary to expectation. Contrary to the doctor's expectation medical expectation, the expectation as a result of the history of the disease. But this was a paradoxus that took place. The paralytic got up, took up his bed and walked. Paralytics are not expected to do that. But when the power of the Lord was present to heal and the word of the Lord was present, the double force like is present even now, what happened? Paradoxos took place. Look at the paradox. The definition of the word paradox is seemingly absurd or contradictory statement or proposition, which when investigated may prove to be well-founded or true. We have seen strange things today. Child of God who's watching, who has been given certain expectations by the doctors. You know, these doctors come and they speak with a lot of authority. And let me first of all make this clear. I do not have anything against doctors. I've preached a message that made it clear that there's no problem going to doctors. I wish I can remember the name of that message even now as I speak. I'm sure they'll put it right there on the screen. It's been clear that there's nothing wrong in going to doctors. You need to go to doctors with your faith. But if you need to go to a doctor, please go to a doctor. I preach on healing, but I've seen doctors and I see doctors. There's nothing wrong in going to doctors, but listen to me. You must understand that doctors do not have the final say. And many times, doctors look at you with a certain authority that goes a bit beyond their profession. They speak to you like they created you and they tell you, you have this number of weeks to live. This is what's going to happen. You're not expected to live beyond this time. This thing will never leave you. Somebody has been told recently, you're going to live with this disease for the rest of your life. Who said so? Get ready for a paradoxal glory be to God because Jesus is present even now as I teach and he's present with the double force of the word and the power of the Lord present to heal. Strange things, strange things contrary to expectation. Many times when you hear testimonies of healing, what you're really listening to are paradoxes. I've had certain paradoxes in my life. There's a psalm in one of my books that is titled, I Will Not Die. And anybody who's heard me teach on, on healing or my healing testimony has heard this story before where the doctors looked at me and told me the expectation. They said to me very clearly, if you take a flight and if you go to 35,000 feet, I will tell you exactly what will happen to you. You will die. There will be nobody there to help you at 35,000 feet. Even oxygen will not help you. This will happen to your lungs and you will die. And this was the expectation. But glory be to God by several things that happened, which I won't go into in this particular episode. That is not what happened. I came off that flight after 13 hours of flying. And that was a paradoxus. I prophesied to you who's watching me. And I prophesy paradoxus into your life. I prophesy a paradoxus against every doctor's report that has come against you in the name of Jesus. And that paradoxus will come as a result of the double force, 
the double force of the word and of the power of God that is always present to heal. If you will lay hold of the healing that is already yours in Christ Jesus, child of God, if you will lay hold of the redemption that is already yours in Christ Jesus, you must realize without a shadow of doubt that it is Jesus. Many times we're focused on things that don't matter. We get excited. It's okay to be excited about a man of God because you know his anointing that came from God and you know there is grace to heal. That's fine. But remember the anointing came from Jesus. And don't get so excited about the vessel that you forget about the source. It was heard that Jesus was present in the house and immediately the clouds, the crowds gathered and they gathered and the power of the Lord was present to heal. I'm emphasizing this because many times people gather, but they don't gather onto Jesus. Or they gather and they gather onto performances. And they gather and they don't remember that it is the double force of the pure and diluted word of God on healing and the power of the Lord that will guarantee paradoxes in your life. So begin to check your bodies and begin to declare that paradoxus has come upon me in this situation and I reject that doctor's report and I declare that strange things, things we have never seen before are my testimony concerning this situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Father for strange healings. Thank you Father for paradoxus. Thank you Father for things contrary to the expectation of the doctors. Thank you because you have the final say. And healing, healing is ours in our redemption package. And I declare in the name of Jesus that every infirmity, every spirit of infirmity is gone in the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak healing to bodies. I speak healing to situations. I command lumps to disappear. I command organs to be set right in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that persistent rash to be cleared up immediately in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that recurrent fever and command it to stop in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for strange healings. Thank you for paradoxes in our lives. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. A new era has begun for you. The heavens are open. All possibilities are now. You are only commanded to prosper. Your course is enlarged in the name of Jesus. Where you have hurt and bowed in shame, it's time to look up and be strong now. 
because a new day breaks upon you. This February, we invite you to Discovering Treasures, the annual World Conference of the Carpenters Ministry. Dates, Friday the 4th, Saturday 5th, and Sunday the 6th of February, 2022. Welcome to 2022, your year of God's generosity. Theme, God's Generosity. Ministering, Dr. F.A. Obuke, guest speaker. Pastor Nkechi Enemises, host. Ministering in music, Stranger, Folabi Noel, and the New Wine Choir. Venue is the Carpenters Church, the Carpenters Drive, off Ajip or Iwafe Road, Mile 4, Rumeme, Port Harcourt. I've put you in a new environment, the environment of victory. So walk in laughter, walk in joy, lift up your head, shout my praise. Discovering Treasures will be streamed to you anywhere in the world on our video and audio platforms. Simply connect to tcchurch.online, Facebook, YouTube, and on Mixler. Childcare and transportation will also be available. Visit www.discoveringtreasures.org for more details. DT 2022, the reign of the pure word is here. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.